Hello everybody, this is just a very short video on fuses. This is the ANET A8. Now, as it comes out of the box, this printer has only one fuse, which is in the power supply, which wouldn't do you a lot of good if there was a short in a heated bed or in a hot end. Um, on a ramps board, there are two poly fuses, and they break when they heat up and they heal when they get cool. One is, I think it's 10 amps or 11, for the heat bed and one is 5 amps for the rest of the board. On the A8 there are no fuses so what I have done, let's move my coffee, is upgrade the wiring and put a couple of fuses in. Not expensive, these are car fuses, standard car fuses. They come in 5, 5, 10, 15, 7.5, really you want 6. You can get 6 amp circuit breakers on eBay for a couple of quid which I've got ordered but for now, I've got a 7.5 amp in on the hot end, and I've got a 15 amp in on the hot bed. And you can see I've wired it up. I'm going to put a bit of tape because the tops of the fuse blades are exposed, but that's the cartridge for the hot end and the rest of everything else. And that's the 15 amp fuse for the heated bed. And now I've done that is, I've left the original cable that came out of the power supply which is pretty skinny um, and it used to go into the power be bridged off and go up into the board doesn't happen anymore what happens is the old cable just comes in and goes through this fuse carrier on the positive rail negative rail is untouched and then straight up and into the board so that's powering or that's fused the line for the circuit board all the motors the hot end um, and everything bar the hotbed so that's uh, moment maybe five to seven and a half amp fuse then I've run a separate <coughs> 12 AWG and the reason I've twisted it is because that cuts down on electromagnetic interference and this is quite a lot of current coming through here so if you turn this up, these on with a radio and you'll see what I mean um, but yeah, 12 AWG cable comes out of a separate positive and negative. You can see I've also put a 30 amp power supply on it. I um, don't know if I covered that before, but anyway, look, separate cable, dedicated cable, all the way up, comes in, and these, these are it here. Okay, so the black one goes into the negative on the MOSFET power for the power into the MOSFET. This is the external MOSFET. I've done a video on that as well. Uh, and the hot the hot rail, the positive rail, does the same thing but via this uh, 15 amp blade fuse. So if there's a short on the bed, instead of pulling everything through it and burning everything out, hopefully this fuse will blow, you whack it open, put a new fuse in. You could even use a circuit breaker type thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's that. So I think this was about, I don't know, quid. That was about £1.52 quid. These were about 50p each. Worth doing. The cable, AWG 12, these are used on drones for the battery. You can see how thick that is, and that's a lot better than the cable that come with it. Wasn't even probably, oh, I don't know, it was alright, but it was getting hot. So when you do, <coughs> it's best practice when you do put um, high current cable on, apparently, I never used to do this. A lot of people just strip the end off, stuff it in and screw it down and they end up with melted connectors because what you can get is you can get uh, the, the, the wires inside are not all compressed together and they, they arc inside, tiny little arcs and eventually causes a lot of heat and it can melt the connectors. So the way around that is to get some of these, it's got these, uh, these um, I don't know what the hell they're called to be honest, insulated sockets, eyelet things scooch them on and then you could do it with pliers but you know for a tenner off uh, ebay or whatever scrunch them down with that and now all of that cable is really really uh, this is not a great example this was one i did to test it but the cable should come through the end and it will be all scrunched down so it's 100 percent contact all the way through and then it's got 100 percent contact onto there and just periodically check these because if they work loose that's when people get melted power connectors not so bad with the external mosfet but definitely with these cheap knockoff these not you know they say they're rated for 10 amps i doubt it i think they're copies 
I don't know. I don't want to bad mouth them, but yeah, that's why that that's why things like that melt and that leads onto the MOSFET. And then if you're going to do the MOSFET, you might as well put the fuses in. So yeah, I hope that helps. So excuse the crappy drawing, but that is the way it will work. Power comes in from the mains, 12 volts out. On the one side you've got your six amps going to the power into the A-net board with a corresponding ground. That then goes on off to the hot end and the motors and what have you. On the other side you've got a separate power ground and then the fuse on the positive 15 amps. The DC in on the heated bed MOSFET. Okay, this green thing is just the uh, signal, so we're using the old MOSFET that would have heated the bed just to trigger the new, more powerful one to heat the bed. So when that gets a signal, it basically bridges that to that and passes it down to the bed. So you've got a fuse on the bed, and you've got a 6 amp fuse on the board, and then hence the motors and what have you. So hopefully that clears up the wiring a bit. So yeah, it's all working. Uh, just a quick test, printing out a few cogs for a PCB mill. You can see them, they're coming out quite well. Uh, all working, nothing's changed, just made it a bit safer. So I hope that helps, and I'll see you all later. Cheers, bye.